so then to uh, wrap up the course, I will just uh, talk a little bit about a general overview of data analysis and some of the aspects on modern data that we're going to deal with as engineers, or that you will deal with certainly as engineers, and that I deal with myself. So to introduce that, if we switch, uh, if you had a chance to download the slides before the class, that's great. If not, it's not serious at all. This is simply a, a very broad overview. Let's go to uh, the new set of slides. But what I'd want to do is to introduce you to this topic. I'm having discussed with the person next to you. Just think about this question for a minute or two. So let's just review where we've come in this course so far. In this course, we've looked at a number of topics. We started off by looking at visualization. Then we looked at multivariate tools such as confidence intervals, means, medians, distributions, pair tests, unpaired tests. Then we moved on to process monitoring. That was about a week of, of material. Then we looked at these squares around the midterm break. And after the midterm break, we completed that. Then the last there's been a substantial time, and I'm actually uh, glad that I spread this out a little bit. We've looked at design experiments. So normally I would have covered this in two to three weeks, and I've actually covered it this time in four weeks, just due to this extra Fridays that you're referring to. So these are the five topics we've looked at so far. So given that context, take, take about three, four minutes and talk with the person next to you or uh, yourself and, and jot down on a piece of paper what you consider the answer to be to these to this question. What can you do with the tools you've learned in this course? What can you do? have jobs lined up pretty much in May, some of you don't, some of you are not actively working on that, but certainly by the end of the year, well, hopefully all of you will have, uh, will have something where you're working. What can you go and do with these tools that we've learned? So these five areas, how would you want to apply them pretty much right away, or not even right away, but maybe over the next few years in your career? Where do you see yourself using it? So let's think about that for a few minutes. We'll take some ideas from everyone and then we'll continue on from that point.
And so we've learned about data visualization, which is an incredibly hot topic right now. So the Harvard Business Review is just running a special month-long series on data visualization right now. This topic was almost non-existent five years ago. It was clearly recognized as being important, but it's just ballooned as being in the front of people's minds right now because of the volume of data we're dealing with. How to effectively visualize that. The univariate section has always been around. Uh, we've always looked at data univariately since the early 1900s. These tests, t-tests and so forth, have been around for as long as that period of time. Process monitoring, 1950s, 1960s, that really took off. Least squares, that's more than 100 years old. So that's substantial history over there. And DOE, something that's been going on for the past 80 years. Okay, so you can start to see where, this, where I'm heading with this. There's a bit of a gap between what we've learned in this course and what you actually need to be effective in today's world. Um, it's not that we're shortchanging you, it's just we don't have the time to teach you another course. Okay, so this is the base course on data analysis. There's a whole other section that's needed to deal with modern data systems. Okay, but these tools are not wasted on you. These tools are the foundation for any other data analysis that you'll be doing in the future will absolutely build on these topics. And the way I would like you to think about data analysis once you start working is not to think of it based on those tools or based on the buzzwords you're going to So you're going to hear about these buzzwords, Bayesian data analysis, random forests, neural networks, PLS, PCA, data mining, Fisher's discriminant analysis, linear discriminant analysis. So all these tools are just different approaches to understanding data. But what I want you to see data analysis rather is let's take a look at the objective we're trying to solve. So this took me a while to figure out myself. But once I started to see the tools as fitting into one of these five categories of the objective I'm trying to solve, then it becomes much easier to select the tool and actually understand what I'm doing here. So the very first thing we try to do most often with our tools is just simply understand our processes. And that's going to be the first thing you will experience when you start working with a new company. The process is likely going to be unfamiliar to you. We do not teach every single flow sheet in the undergraduate course here. And even if we did, it would never be at the level of detail that would be required for you to be effective in the company you're working at. So you're going to have to really get into the data to un improve your understanding of what's going on in that process. So this, this was actually mentioned earlier, a better understanding of the data, to see where, where things lie. This one here on risk assessment, where the bounds are, that's also part of learning about where my process is, what my process is doing. Okay, so we've looked at a few tools for that. We've looked at data visualization. That's going to help you actually understand what's going on in a fairly large data set. DOE is a really, really important tool to improve in your understanding of the process by like finding out which variables actually have an effect on the process or not. So someone might come up with some new method, a new technique in a few years' time, or some latest statistical buzzword and say this is going to help, but you have to recognize that there's other tools that you've already learned about that can help improve your understanding of the process. Another one that should be there that you can add is these squares. These squares is a great tool to understand your process, right? Interpreting what that slope coefficient BA or BB means in the least squares model is telling you how much the change in that variable will affect Y. That's learning about your process and understanding which variables have a significant effect and which don't. Okay, so the next major area I see uh, from the analysis is simply troubleshooting problems. So I can pretty much guarantee that most of you for the rest of your career will just be doing one and two. Three, four, and five happen less often. Okay, but definitely one and two is something that every engineer is doing, especially number two. Most of your time is simple troubleshooting process, figuring out what's gone wrong and fixing it up. When I was, every job I've worked in, that's been the most of my time is spent doing that. And then if there's been extra hours, you can develop systems here in 3, 4, and 5 to help number 2. But most of the time, you're simply running around, figuring out what's gone wrong, 
diagnosing the problem and making changes to the process to get that problem out of the system. So we can use monitoring charts, data visualizations that are very effective. This idea, what has changed, is exactly what troubleshooting is. So troubleshooting is your process is operating normally, something's gone on, and you're seeing a problem in your quality, or you're seeing a problem in certain variables on your process that have moved around. Have they changed in a significant manner? <coughs> Finding those that have changed significantly versus eliminating those that haven't changed is a big, big issue. So I'll show you a great example of a company that had 500 variables. Which one of those 500 are the ones that changed? You can't go plot every single chart univariately and see, well, this one looks different from that. You need automatic tools to go and do that. Okay. So, this, I'll talk about that example in, in tomorrow's class, you'll see that. But guarantee, number one and two, you will be doing those all the time. And to help you troubleshoot your process, tools like process monitoring are incredibly effective. Okay, so that implies that you have a monitoring system in place already. But what I mean by that in step two here is, how do you interpret those patterns in the monitoring charts? How do you interpret the patterns in the data visualization plot? and help you to guide, to come to an answer of what's actually gone wrong. The next one is predictive modeling. So if there is a third one that many of you will be involved in, it's that one. We uh, do need these predictive models in our companies. They save us a lot of money because we do not have the ability very often to predict, uh, sorry, to, to measure those Y variables in real time. So many Y variables that we've built our, our models for are difficult to measure, it will take a long time to measure. So there's a, this one assignment example where we were uh, predicting short chain branching in assignment six or the melt index. I forget if that was assignment five or if it was in uh, one, of the, one of the requests. So we looked at that, those two before. So being able to predict those hard to measure values in real time from our data are extremely valuable to us. We can make quite a bit of money by what, building what we call a soft sensor. So this is a software sensor to predict in real time what those Y variables are. And then the most effective way of doing, of using those models then is to apply feedback control. So once you've made your Y variable prediction, then you apply feedback control to adjust your process to keep that Y value on target where, where the company requires. Okay. Uh, the next uh, two, we, we will see from time to time, you'll, you'll certainly have to use these tools even though you don't build them yourself, and that's a process monitoring system. So likely you may not build a process monitoring system yourself, you've had this experience of doing so in assignment four, but most of the times you put your data into some pre-configured computer software, and it builds the monitoring system for you. It finds the limits, you pick the chart type that you want, but you have to understand what's going on behind there because the raw data that you put into that monitoring system is going to have outliers and it's going to bias those numbers. So we need to understand what that software is doing behind the scenes, which is why we spent quite a bit of time looking at doing this manually. Though we recognize that in practice we can have software to, to build those models for us. And then the final way of using or extracting value from our data is probably the most powerful one available to us in terms of dollar value that you get from it. So these other ones over here are incremental dollar values, but this fifth one is substantial dollar value. So the, the jump in profitability in implementing these is really, really high. And the nice thing is about this, there is no modern buzzword statistical tool for it. The only ones that have survived and still remain the most effective way is design experiments. There is one, PLS, PLS, partial least squares, is one tool that has started to become very useful for process optimization and improvement. Okay, so for any of you taking grad courses here at Mac, next year I'm teaching that uh, latent variable course, the PLS and PCA, 700 level course. If you're still around at Mac, feel free to come sit in on the classes or um, watch them online. But I just found out last week that I've been asked to teach that course again, and we will definitely cover this topic here of uh, PLS and 
combining POs with design experiments to make our processes extremely hard. So when you think about data analysis, I want you to think of them in these five categories. Don't think about data in terms of the tool. These are just tools, okay? And you've learned five very simple tools. These five tools have tremendous shortcomings. Okay, we'll talk about this in tomorrow's class. There's a substantial number of shortcomings with these squares. And looking at our data unit very that do not make these tools useful to us in every situation. So don't think about your tools. What you should think about is think about your objective. Once you have your objective in mind, the selection of the appropriate tool falls out naturally in almost every case I've worked in. Okay, so I want you to think for tomorrow's class, as our final class, it will be a fairly uh, rapid overview of modern data and modern data systems. But I want you to also have in the back of your mind any other ideas of how you might use data analysis that you might think of. Think of those. You might uh, want to talk with me about it afterwards, make uh, some suggestions by email, and then I can raise them in class tomorrow. Also, in tomorrow's class, I will just talk about the final exam, which I haven't said yet, and the registrar's office is after me for it. Um, so I will uh, we'll, we'll give an overview of that in the class session.